All right, Arkansas Democrats, we are about to hear from our keynote speaker tonight. And to introduce him, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Democratic Party of Arkansas Chair Grant Tenniel. So, I'm up here on a point of personal privilege. There were a lot of people that wanted to introduce Dr. Jones this evening. And I looked at the list and many of them are friends. But I said, nah, I think I'm going to do it. And there's really only one reason why. I believe in that man with everything I got. And I want you all to believe too. And let me tell you, belief is what's going to get this done. I did a long interview this week with a reporter from the statewide newspaper who wanted to talk to me about money in the governor's race. And like a lot of journalists, she can read. And she finally looked at me and said, people with this big of an imbalance in funding don't win very often. And I looked at her and I said, okay, hang on. Chris and I have been talking about this for months and months. And we've come to the same conclusion together. I don't care how much money she has. We need to raise the money so that Chris Jones can tell his story to the people of Arkansas. And that's the only thing we have to worry about. And it's a heck of a story. He's not, he wasn't the kid. You know. Part of the reason she's so wrong, nobody would have laid a bet when Chris Jones was two that he would have the academic career he had, that he would have the professional career that he's had, that he would be running for governor of Arkansas as a physicist and a minister. Never would have bet, but here he is. He's ready to lead this state. And, and here's why I'm so certain. He is reality-based, he is data-driven. He knows that the answers for what ail Arkansas largely lie in everything we already know about Arkansas. And he understands, put it simply, the scientific method. He understands how to take that data, organize it properly, analyze it, and come to a conclusion that will work. He has a vision for this state. And that vision, for the first time, probably ever, includes every single one of us. He's ambitious for us. He knows that we can do better. And he knows how to lead us there. And he will. If we can get him elected. Now, what's that going to take? It's going to take every single person in this room and the other 2,000 of you that are elsewhere today working hard, dedicating yourselves to getting out there and telling the Chris Jones story to everyone who will stand still long enough for you to finish. Because once people get to know Chris Jones, who he is, 
what he believes, what he stands for, it becomes a very, very easy decision. But we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. Hand to hand, mouth to ear. We're going to get out there and we're going to tell this story. And we're going to get Chris Jones elected. We can't afford not to. His opponent is a dilettante. She thinks somehow we're just going to hand this thing to her. She has no vision, no vision for this state. And the little bit of vision she tried to articulate at the beginning, she's already backed way off of because somebody finally tapped her on the shoulder and said, yeah, the math doesn't work. I'll let Chris Jones do my math any day. <laughs> We catch a little grief, and we caught some grief last night because the other real reason that I so badly need Chris Jones in the governor's office is that he's a fellow nerd. And so those of you who were with us yesterday evening might have noticed that when he got there, we were very quickly, with our backs up against the wall and our heads together, talking about data. Seriously. And everything we want to do to make Arkansas government more data informed than it is now. Finally, Rona and my people kept walking up to us and going, you guys got to talk to some of these other people in the room. Stop doing this. But we have become close largely because we share a common vision for what this state can be. And so it is my intention, if I can get back to a place that will make it work, to paraphrase a quote from one of the greatest Democrats. And I'll put a little spin on it. I believe that this party should commit itself in this year to putting the Jones family in the governor's mansion and keeping them there safely for the next eight years. My friends, Please, up and on your feet and loud as you can go for Dr. Chris Jones, the next governor of Arkansas. NASA. I don't know if y'all saw his shirt. Thank you all. Thank you for being you. Thank you for showing up. My name is Chris Jones, and I stand here today, a seventh generation Arkansan, whose family has been in this state for over 200 years, and I am honored to be the Democratic nominee for the great state of Arkansas, and I want your vote. <laughs> Arkansas was built around values of hard work, community, faith, commitment, accountability, truth, and love. Through generation, through grandparents' prayers and children's laughter, Arkansans at home and abroad 
are the visions and dreams of our ancestors. It was those values of faith, hope, and hard work that led my papa Jesse Torrance, who was a truck driver with a third grade education, to make the choice to push education even though he never learned to read and never was able to get a formal education. He would tell me, big man, get an education. Because when you get it in your head, no one can take it out. And I took that lesson to heart. Doing so meant that I had to ignore the fact that statistics showed that a kid from Pine Bluff was destined to remain in Pine Bluff. The data predicted that a little black boy who spent much of his time riding dirt bikes, fighting grasshoppers, and eating honeysuckle, and who grew up using food stamps, would eventually attend some of the greatest institutions in the world. Going to Morehouse College and earning a degree in physics and math, and then to MIT and earning a master's degree in nuclear engineering, a master's degree in technology and policy, and a PhD in urban planning. What the statistics could not see, what the data did not know, was that being surrounded by love and by community, having an unwavering passion and commitment, being taught to make wise choices, understanding that it's God who brings the increase, and knowing how to use my voice were the unknown elements, the X factors that would make my life's trajectory even possible and allow me to do the impossible. My wife took that lesson to heart even though she never knew him because she grew up with the same values. She was raised in the South, attended Howard University and got a, bi a biology degree. She got her master's in public health. She went to Harvard Medical School for a medical degree. Dr. Geraldine Jones is an emergency room physician, a combat veteran of the Air Force, an absolutely beautiful woman, if I might add. She got an education and used it when she was working as an ER doc at the finish line during the Boston Marathon bombing. She got an education and used it when she was serving as the Arkansas State Medical Director for Disaster Preparedness, particularly during COVID. She got an education and uses it when she's saving lives in the emergency room. My prayer is that our three beautiful daughters, Jordan, Janelle, and Jasmine, and yes, I'm a proud girl dad. My, <laughs> my prayer is that they take his lesson to heart. My prayer is that they always understand the power of their choices and the impact of their voices. A former governor of ours understood the power of his choices and the impact of his voice when he made the choice to stop and speak to a little eight-year-old boy. One afternoon, when I was eight, my father drove me from Pine Bluff to Little Rock. We were probably driving his small Volkswagen that had a not-so-small hall in the floor where you could see right to the road. On this particular trip, we were in the mall and bumped into none other than then-Governor Bill Clinton. I was fascinated by Governor Clinton and his willingness to fully engage me. So after we finished, my curiosity led me to ask my father, Dad, what does he do? And he said, he's a governor. I guess I wasn't satisfied, so then I asked him, but what does a governor do? And just like a typical parent of a Gen Xer, he said, go look it up. This was before Google search, so we went home to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And we didn't have the whole set, 
but we had G. <laughs> and what I found out was that a governor wears many hats. But at the end of the day, a governor deals with real problems of real people. A governor can't afford to be bound by the smallness of politics. A governor works for the people. From that moment forward, I made the choice to live a life of service, service to God, service to my family, and service to the state where my family has lived. That choice could not be more important now. The stakes are high across the country and especially here in Arkansas. Here, we face a strict government mandate designed to interfere with private medical decisions and puts us on a slippery slope that could place more of our individual rights and personal rights at risk. Here, hardworking educators, the heroes who help today's young people become leaders of tomorrow, rank at the very last in our region with the lowest teacher pay of any of our neighboring states. Here, one in four kids go to bed hungry every night, and we are losing ground on child welfare. Here, businesses are leaving because of discriminatory policies. Here, the legislature is trying to rewrite rules on who gets to vote, how people get to vote, and how we get to propose ballot initiatives. Never has an election in Arkansas mattered so much. Never has an election for governor mattered so much. The choice we face is stark. We face my opponent, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is an agent of chaos and division, best known as politics' latest example of nepotism in action, and very well known for her time as a mouthpiece for America's most criminal insurrectionist and traitor-in-chief. She and her boss have incited a new brand of extremism politics that Arkansans now must fight off across the state. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is an election denier who supports the Proud Boys and Q. To top it off, she wants to eliminate 55% of our state's revenue but won't tell us the things that she will gut to go along with that. Is it police, education, rural health, or farming supports? This is something that Kentucky tried, and they failed miserably. Yes, this is the choice we face. She wants to privatize everything from education to transportation to prisons. She supports eliminating Social Security and Medicare every five years. She won't release plans and won't speak to the media. She hasn't held a private sector job and she, that she actually had to work for. This is the choice we face, but we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice. Arkansas has long had a habit of staying towards the pragmatic middle, a long practice of electing leaders who can govern past party label, literally electing Republican and Democrat as governors, back and forth for years. Look, the governor before our current one was a Democrat, and together we can make the next one a Democrat as well. Many want us to believe that we don't have a choice. Many are counting us out. They're making it more difficult for our voices to be heard. They are sowing seeds of division with the hopes that we will opt out. But now is not the time to opt out. Now is the time to opt in. We face more than oppositions. 
we face something worse. And listen carefully. To divide us is their goal. They will paint us as different, radical, even dangerous. They will lie, cheat, and steal. They will try to promote chaos and fear. We've seen this playbook before. It's the politics of division and subtraction. That playbook has been around forever, and it's always the same story. The elite and powerful play on our fears to stop us so we don't band together. They don't want us to embrace the politics of addition and multiplication. But we have a choice. We have a choice. We can stand on the belief that unites us. No matter how we look, where we come from, or what issues brought us to the fight. Yes, we can fight for all working people, whether they're working at Cooper Tire in Texarkana, Big River Steel in Osceola, on a farm in Rosebud, in a, as a community health provider in Mariana, a truck driver in Stevens, or an Uber driver in Little Rock. Yes, we can fight for families in rural communities, hoping that their kids won't leave town. We can help them innovate like Helena West Helena's Delta Dirt Distillery, taking sweet potatoes and making vodka. We can fight for them. We can fight for moms and dads in the suburbs, worried about paying mortgage because inflation is squeezing them and the cost of education is stretching them. We can fight for millennials moving to Northwest Arkansas with insane student debt and fi finding out that they can't afford the rent because it's just too high. Or the retiree moving to Eureka Springs and finding out that there's just not enough housing options in the first place. The truth is, it's all the same fight. The fight for Arkansas. The fight for every Arkansan. This cycle Let's come together, make our choice, and lift our voice. Let's do it together. This cycle, this cycle, this cycle, let us all be a part of the fight in choosing community instead of chaos. Community instead of chaos. Here's why it matters. Arkansas needs us now. <laughs> Arkansas needs us to choose to invest in modernizing our economy, whether it be supporting existing small business owners who are the lifeblood of our communities, encouraging entrepreneurs to create an art agricultural technology accelerator that it can boost innovation like our financial technology accelerator has done bolstering new industries that address global challenges, are just doing a much better job of marketing our small and medium-sized cities across Arkansas to attract investment and development in those areas. Arkansas can be ready for a modern economy, but we need the right leaders. Arkansas is ready for us to choose to invest in fixing our systems. Systems like our overburdened levees, our broken bridges, Department of Motor Vehicle Lines, and convoluted agency websites. Arkansas needs us to choose to fix them now. Arkansas is ready for us to choose to invest in high quality education, starting with pre-K. <laughs> to invest in safe, reliable infrastructure, starting with broadband. And in real economic development, starting with living wage jobs or as I like to call it, PB&J. Preschool, broadband, and jobs. Let's say it, preschool, broadband, and jobs. Preschool, broadband, and jobs. And not just in some part, but across the state. Investing in areas that have been ignored and forgotten. This means working directly 
with rural and farming Arkansas and creating a modern economy together. Here's the truth. We can fix these systems. We can make investments, modernize our economy, and do it in a very fiscally responsible manner, being mindful, thoughtful, and cautious of every dollar spent. The public trust demands that we do so. We can make communities safe without taking guns from law-abiding citizens who have every right to have them. Our children's future yearns for us to do so. We can stand on and live out our faith without turning our state into a church. Our divided communities are begging for us to do so. And we can make mistakes without covering it up or pretending to be perfect. Our civil discourse is thirsty for us to do so. Arkansas needs us to lift our voice now. We've been told we have no choice. We've been told that things are impossible. We have been treated as if all hope should be lost. And for some, hope seems lost. But hear me, now is not the time to give up or give in. Now is the time to dig deep, to lean in and fight on. Now is the time because our strength is renewed. And I know Arkansans. We are Arkansans. And I'm here to remind you of that today. The road is not easy. The work is not letting up. If you need a shoulder to lean on, let it be this campaign. And you can join this campaign easily by going to chrisforgovernor.com. That's chrisforgovernor.com. You like that, Rona? <laughs> Donate and fund a bus that will take voters to the polls or sign up to Canvas and educate Arkansans of their real options. We need each other. Because y'all, we are taking the fight right to the creators of chaos. <laughs> We can do it because we are Arkansans. We are Miss Rebecca in Louisville, who has sent letters to churches in the area. We are Miss Pat, who sits in our Little Rock office and makes phone calls educating voters on why elections matter. We are Anna and Mariella, who dial in weekly to talk about our field team, and about ways to activate their communities. And Arkansans are fighting because we are ready for something better. Our Kansans know that we deserve better than an out-of-office candidate running an out-of-office campaign. This is not the time for absence. This is the time for action. And each of us, each Democratic candidate, up and down the ballot, will show up for every Arkansan. This campaign is showing up. This party is showing up. And today, I will make you a promise. When I am governor of Arkansas, I will work for you, and I will work with you. When I'm, when I'm governor, I won't be absent, and I won't be silent. The urgency of this moment requires a governor with the courage to show up and speak up. We're going to make sure that the former president's mouthpiece does not have a chance to use Arkansas as a stepping stone to a higher office. <laughs> Let me be very clear. I've spent the last year going to every county, knocking on doors, standing on front porches, walking miles, and I've heard you and I've listened. You want community. You've been told for the last six years that you have to hate the person next door, and you're exhausted. So if you want to get our communities back, you must have your neighbors back. It's the only way we're going to heal the state and our great nation. My opponent cannot understand that. 
Her campaign, like her career, has been about creating division and making you distrust. And as a man of faith, I cannot accept that. <laughs> Supporting me means making your choice and lifting your voice. It means making your choice for competence over corruption, laws over lies, and votes over violence. It means using your voice for books over bans, excellence over extremism, and truth over tantrums. It means making your choice and lifting your voice for community over chaos. It's the state of Arkansas as a state of grace, and it is our future. I know it. I know it because I've been to all 75 counties across our state, and like I said, we've literally walked a mile together, laughed together, prayed together, and on some occasions even cried together. And I know it because we love Arkansas. And y'all, I feel it deeply in my bones that we are ready to choose community again. <laughs> we are ready for truly living out the second most command, most important command in the Bible that I follow, which is to love my neighbor as myself. And I know it because I've seen it. It's in the eyes of the 70-year-old man who registered the vote for the first time in his entire life, and he did so in our campaign office. <laughs> it's in the blistered hands of the sanitation worker who toured me around the landfill and was beaming because he was an ex-felon and we helped him get his voting rights restored. <laughs> I know it because I've heard it. It's in the laughter of the little girl who held her mother's hand and asked, are you Chris Jones? It's in the intensity of Jack's questions, a preteen who's already committed to public service. And I know it because I felt it. It's in the exhaustion of the young lady in Darnell. She was sitting in the library and on the computer because she just needs affordable broadband. And as she was in the library, she said that she lost her internet service. And she was on the internet looking for a job because she lost her job because she had stage four cancer. We're better than that. We're better than that. We can be there for each other. She can't seem to catch a break, but together we can give her a break. And we should. I also know it because it's in the frustration of our neighbors in Harrison, who is fed up with being labeled a racist because of where he lives and he's ready to work his fingers to the bone to change things. It's in the hopefulness of the beauty shop owner who when I stop by in hope, she pulled me aside and asked, can I pray for you in your campaign? Because she believed that we were doing the right thing. And it's in the close embrace of Mr. Fault, a disabled, nearly homeless military veteran. He's on a fixed income and always comes up about three to four hundred dollars short each month. After he heard me speak, he walked up, held my arm, leaned in, and whispered in my ear, whatever you do, Please don't forget about us. Mr. Fault, we will never forget. We can build, we can make our choice to rebuild a community that includes all our Kansans, including Mr. Fault, a community that lifts up and doesn't tear down. Now let me tell you the story of the bumblebee. It's a fascinating story, and it's why I wear the pin on my jacket. The bumblebee's body is extra large, when compared to its tiny wings. If you look at it, you must ask, how does it even fly? And scientists asked that question decades ago. They were so confused that they ran the numbers. They calculated all the odds, and they determined that it was aerodynamically impossible for the bumblebee to fly. But the bumblebee flies anyway. The bumblebee made a choice to defy the odds. The bumblebee made a choice to ignore the experts. 
And all my life, experts have been telling me that it's impossible for me to fly. I'm a kid from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, who grew up with food stamps. The odds said that there was no way I should earn five degrees, become a rocket scientist, run several multi-million dollar organizations, and work on several successful governor's campaigns. The odds were not in my favor, but I chose to defy them. The experts told us that this race is impossible. Many even said that we'd never make it out of the primary. And yet here we are. We made a choice to defy the odds and fly anyway. It turns out that the bumblebee knew something the scientists never knew. It knew something that the experts did not discover until decades later when they got new models and new ways of looking at the situation. You see, when the bumblebee flies and flaps his wings, his tiny wings, when it works hard, when it shows up in every county, when it takes no voter for granted, when it registers people to vote, when it donates to local candidates, makes phone calls and drags people to the poll, when it puts in the work using the tools it has, those wings create something called a vortex. And that vortex that's underneath the bumblebee's wings, it gives it lift to fly. Arkansas Democrats, our voice is our vortex. When we lift our voice, we get the lift we need to fly. When we speak up about things that matter, when we spread the word about how we will work for all our Kansans, how we will create a modern economy in Arkansas, when we loudly tell everyone that, th that we know that there, is a great, there are great candidates all across this state ready to work for them, that is when we get lift. Our voice is the vortex we need to unleash the promise of Arkansas. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am the promise of Arkansas. Now look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you are the promise of Arkansas. When we make our choice and lift our voice, we show the world that we are the promise of Arkansas. Repeat it after me, we are the promise of Arkansas. We are the promise of Arkansas. Now all together, we are the promise of Arkansas. We are the promise of Arkansas. We are the promise of Arkansas. God bless you all and may God bless the great state of Arkansas.